In a sense, the modern world is built on gold. It's in all of the technology we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Our computers, phones, and televisions all need at least some of this precious metal in their manufacturing processes. Even the machines building these products have gold in them. With all the gold that industries around the world go through, it's easy to forget that it's such a finite, scarce resource. In the mining industry, extracting a 28th of an ounce of gold from one ton of earth is a good day. Still, due to gold's fluctuating but ultimately high monetary value, every ounce of gold mined pays for itself and then some. At the time of writing, a 439 ounce bar of gold was worth roughly $800,000. So just how much gold is there in the world exactly? Gold in the ground is divided into one of two categories, gold reserves and gold resources. Gold reserves refer to gold deposits that are profitable to mine at current gold prices. The opposite applies to gold resources, which have far less gold in them to mine or require more effort or specialized technology to access. With each ounce of gold costing anywhere from $700 to $1,400 to mine, depending on its all-in sustaining costs and part of the world in which it's mined, meeting profit margins will only get tougher as time goes on. Operational costs, security, and the mine's market position place additional pressure on mining operations, driving up the cost per ounce. Geological experts estimate that there are roughly 50,000 metric tons of gold reserves left available to mine underground. For reference, it is estimated that about 190,000 tons have been mined over the course of human history. Based on these figures, it's estimated that only 20% of the planet's initial raw gold supply is left. Although novel technologies such as big data, AI, and smart data mining may optimize mining processes in the future, bringing down costs, we may not need to go that far if we want to keep up with the global demand for gold. There's a far simpler and more environmentally friendly option, recycling. As gold is virtually indestructible, in theory, we'll be able to keep reusing the gold we've already mined long after the mines are tapped out. As gold recycling processes are refined and more gold is able to be retrieved from waste, this industry will only continue to grow over time. One key player in gold recycling's growth will be e-waste. Currently, about 90% of all recycled gold comes from jewelry with the remaining 10% coming from recycled technology. Over 50 million tons of e-waste are produced each year, enough to outweigh the combined weight every commercial airline ever produced. With 80% of all e-waste either informally recycled or ending up in landfills, a good chunk of potentially usable gold gets left on the table. As such, there's a good chance that gold recycling initiatives will place a greater emphasis on extracting gold from e-waste in the coming decades. E-waste may even overtake mining and profitability in the future. One ton of e-waste contains up to 100 times more gold than one ton of gold ore, since gold found in e-waste has already been processed. But is recycling our only option once we've mined nearly all of the gold in the world? As our technology improves, we may find prospectors searching for gold deposits in unusual places, like the ocean. Aside from establishing mines one to two miles underwater, we might see facilities purpose-built for extracting residual gold found in ocean water. There's an estimated 20 million tons of gold waiting to be harvested in the ocean, both in underwater deposits and in the ocean itself. That would be worth roughly $771 trillion, using 2017's valuation of gold as a reference. As gold grows more scarce and more valuable, the thought of siphoning ocean water for trace amounts of gold 
might not seem like such a crazy idea 